Welcome to another Battle of the Ports. This week we are taking a look at a game that may be based upon an unreleased arcade game. No evidence has ever been found that a true arcade game was made, but all ports do say insert coin, and some ports even stated that this game was based upon the hit arcade. The game of course is Titus's Fire and Forget 2. We'll start off with the Amiga version that was released in 1990. The default setting is a game with no sound effects, which is odd as Amiga games often default to sound effects and no music, if both aren't available together. I had a lot of interest in this game back in the day due to loving Space Harrier. This is basically that, but with a car. However, Fire and Forget 2 is nowhere near as playable. I'm playing this Amiga version with mouse controls, allowing for bullets and rockets on separate buttons. It also makes moving a little easier. What I do like about this game is that while you need to push up or down to accelerate or brake, you don't need to hold the direction, which makes turning so much easier. Sadly, Fire and Forget 2, while fun short term, soon becomes dull after the third level or so. Are all versions like this? Well, let's find out. Next up is the ST version. Now while this may sound worse than the Amiga version and lacks the flashy line drawn effects on the title screen, it is basically the exact same game. The only plus point is that the music doesn't pause for a split second to play a different tune when you gain a bonus or die. Commodore 64 quite often falls flat on its arse when it comes to driving games. So how well is the port of Fire and Forget 2? Well, I'm happy to see the parallax scrolling, while reduced in layers, is still here. The scaling is also quite smooth on road objects and it moves at a more sensible speed than the Amiga or ST versions, with their crazy hyperspeed. Sadly the game isn't going to keep your attention very long. The stages are all too samely and most enemies can be taken out by just staying in the middle of the road. Good music though. Since Titus was a French company, they were definitely going to bring out an Amstrad CPC version, since the French love the CPC. But just wait a moment. What's that I hear? Sound effects and music simultaneously? We all know which format Titus liked, don't we? For a CPC title, this moves at a reasonable speed and looks really nice as far as colour is concerned. Sadly the parallax scrolling is gone and the gameplay is rather lacking, but hey, it's better than the Commodore 64 version.
Oh boy, the French really did like Amstrad. Titus even made a GX4000 port. Yeah, a game for what is basically a slightly upgraded Amstrad CPC. This port runs at a high resolution, features more colour and has lines in the road. But man, the audio is terrible. The gun sound effects seem to be tied to the pitch of the music, meaning that when the music pitch gets higher, the sound effects volume gets lower and vice versa. Actually having lower sound effects at times is a blessing because they sound so awful. same day of release as the Amstrad GX4000 port also came the Sega Master System port. A port that may just bitch slap the 16-bit Amiga and SD ports simply because the controls give it the upper edge. Graphically this Master System port is weaker but it still keeps the parallax scrolling and possibly the smoothest implementation of it as well. It also sounds weaker than the Amiga but I'd say nicer than the ST and a million times better than the piss poor GX4000 release. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter, because it's still a pretty poor game. Good old Titus, they just love developing crap. Let's take a look at all those versions of Fire and Forget 2 running side by side. 